Today I'm going to open up my hydrogen generator to replace the electrodes and membranes and to check if there's any chromium-6 in the electrolyte. Okay, so I have the hydrogen generator set up like this. I'm going to put it in a crate so in case there is some electrolyte that flows over it or around it or whatever not being sucked into my workbench. You can see here that it's in a quite a sorry state uh, because it wasn't leaking at all or anything but I uh, drained most of the electrolyte so that the water could evaporate. I was only left with a crystallized uh, sodium hydroxide and maybe sodium chromate or whatever form of chromium is in there. So. Um, We'll put on my gloves and this uh, face shield so nothing will splatter into my face or be absorbed by my hands. And you can see that it's uh, quite stuck, quite stuck in here. And it's because of all the crystallized sodium hydroxide. Okay, well, let's first drain the rest of the electrolytes. Okay, so now all the uh, leftover electrolyte got into this uh, container and now the sodium hydroxide that was crystallized dissolved. So I now can move around the generator again, okay, which is nice because I now I can take it out. Um, this is really messy. I really don't like to do this. This is a very dirty job and I need to be very careful because I honestly don't know if it's really chromium or whatever, but it's, uh, it's a dirty job. So let's continue. Okay, so you can very clearly see now how disgusting this is. I need to now uh, scoop it out, put it into a bucket so I can uh, deliver it to the chemical waste disposal facility. Because you never should throw this stuff through the toilet or whatever, it's just criminal. Okay, so now let's scoop it into this uh, bucket. Also put all the contaminated hoses in here. We can all dispose of it in one go. You know, I'm still not 100% sure that this is chromium because um, the membranes I used, which is uh, a kitchen cloth, is also yellow. And I saw in the other experiment that I did where I used a blue nylon uh, tablecloth that there also was blue dye coming off of it into the solution. And that's what I thought at first, that it was the yellow coloring from the kitchen cloth uh, until someone warned me about uh, chromium. Thanks again for that, by the way. Okay, so most of the electrolyte is gone now, so now I'm going to open up the generator and let's see what it uh, looks inside. Okay, so the first electrode is off. This was a negative electrode, so the one that uh, only produced hydrogen. And you can see here that the membrane, I tear this apart so it wasn't torn at all, but you 
can see here that it's quite flimsy. That's probably what caused the leaks. Because if you have a hole that's a little bit bigger, then uh, the bubbles just go through. You can see that this is what the membrane looked like before. This is just a uh, kitchen cloth. And uh, it's much more sturdy. You can see through it as easy as this one. So uh, I think most of the yellow coloring is from this being dissolved in uh, over one and a half years. So, um, well, let's open it up further and let's see what the positive electrodes look like. Okay, so this is the center electrode. This was a positive electrode on both sides. Well, you can see that there is slight discoloration, but not much and there's no significant erosion anywhere. You can even see the texture from when it was manufactured. So, well, that is a good sign. So I'm very curious how much uh, chromium there really will be in the solution. Okay, so I will now do the rest and I'll come back. Okay, so now the hydrogen generator is completely apart. So these are the parts which need to be cleaned. This is the waste electrolyte, which I need to uh, dispose of. And uh, so now let's clean these parts. Then we can do some other experiments and we'll explain a little bit better of how it works. Okay, so a lot of you have asked me in the comments of my hydrogen generator video how the separation uh, really works. I said uh, in those comments that I would explain that in a later video. So this is that video. So um, you have here the electrode and this just I'm going to explain it only in one section of the hydrogen generators. So just a positive and a negative electrode. And um, you have here one electrode. You can see here that it has a lot of holes on the side. And you have here one, two, three holes that are a little bit out of line. And because these are the gas escape holes, and this is the electrolyte return hole. And um, put this uh, seal on here, and it has a hole with a opening at the bottom. And the other hole is just a normal hole. And at the bottom is also a hole with an opening. So what happens is that if you have a membrane like this, that um, the gas that's being produced by this electrode, let's say it's hydrogen, and uh, the gas that's being trapped at this side of the membrane, it then can only go out through this hole. And this hole is sealed off. If you put another seal over it, like so, it's the same seal but just turned around. Well, sort of like so. So this is the channel which uh, allows hydrogen to flow through. And uh, on this side of the membrane is uh, the other electrode, this electrode, which produces oxygen. And the oxygen can only go through this opening. And that's how the gases are separated. And then you stack a lot of these on top of each other. So this side then will only allow oxygen to flow through. And this one will allow only hydrogen to flow through. So I hope this clarifies it a little bit. Uh, also in the follow-up videos when I'm going to do experiments with new membranes and electrodes, I will also show you how the generator is stacked and that will also clarify how the generator works. Okay, so I'm really curious to know if there's any chromium in the solution. So I, I did a little research on the uh, interwebs and I found some things to do to test if there's uh, chromium in the solution. But I'm not a chemist, so I'm just going to do these uh, things for educational purpose for myself. So don't copy the things I do because I'm just an amateur at this point. Well, first let's filter this uh, solution to see if there's any uh, solids in it which uh, give it yellow color. It's always nice doing chemistry without proper tools. Not. So I just let this seep through. Mm. 
Okay, so it's now all seeped through the filter. We'll throw this with the other chemical waste. Okay, so now let's check the pH of this uh, solution. And you can see that it's uh, 10, 11, very alkaline at least. So now we know that. Okay, so now the solution has a pH of around 12. So if we now put in some hydrochloric acid, I'm not sure how much. And the pH should drop. Let's see what it is now. And the thing is, if this was sodium chromide, then by decreasing the pH level, the sodium chromide should turn into sodium dichromide, which is orange. So by putting in acid, you should get an orange color. But you see here, it's actually it's become cloudy and a little bit light in color. So if there's chromium in the solution, it's probably not a lot, but even a little bit can be dangerous. Let's take another strip. Let's see what the pH is. So the pH already dropped significantly, because you can see here that it's now about uh, pH of 1, which is perfect, because I know someone who has a chromium test kit to test for chromium 6, and uh, for that test kit you need to have an acidic solution for a pH level around 1. So uh, this solution is now ready for that test. So let's now do the final chromium test. Okay, so this is the test kit I used. And you just need to put in a few drops of the white bottle and the black bottle. Then you shake it up and wait three minutes. And then you can do a color comparison on this card. And you can see here that the color changed a little bit. So I added the droplets in the left file. And the right file is just for comparison. And I'm actually not sure if the color change came from chromium in the solution or just from the color of the droplets because they were a little bit brownish. So if there's chromium in it, then it is a very small amount. But just to be safe, I will dispose of the electrolyte as chemical waste. And I will make my new electrodes of nickel plated copper, of which I already have an experimentation video. I will put a link in the description. And actually I was very lucky that there is so little chromium or even no chromium in my solution. But I saw videos from other YouTubers who had uh, quite a lot of chromium in their solution. And uh, well actually then you will be forced into the position of working with chromium. And especially if you don't have a lot of uh, experience in chemistry like me, then it's uh, going to be a very difficult situation. And the fact that I don't have a lot of chromium in my electrolyte is probably because of a short run time, because it didn't run all that long in comparison to other hydrogen generators. Or maybe they just put more current through it or something like that. Anyway, I recommend not using stainless steel electrodes if you, like me, don't know how to deal with chromium oxides. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe, click the notification bell and see you next time.